Oh, okay. So uh, let me have the honor of uh, presenting Dr. Ashish Shukla before our uh, learned audience. And Dr. Ashish Kumar Shukla is working as a scientist in Space Application Center SAC, ISRO, Ahmedabad, since May 2005. He received his PhD degree in mathematics from Lucknow University, Lucknow, in the year 2003. He is working in the field of satellite navigation for more than 17 years and has contributed significantly to satellite navigation programs of Indian Space Research Organization. He had privilege to work in India's two most significant navigation programs. Uh, you have heard about Gagan and obviously many discussions have been made on Navi. So he's the person who is uh, directly working on the topic since their inception. Uh, uh, he's the member of the team uh, which has developed Navic user receivers and Navic payload test receiver. Uh, he also has done extensive work in differential positioning using GPS and Navic and anospheric modeling as well. So Dr. Shukla is the Deputy Project Director, DPD of a reusable launch vehicle, RLV project of ISRO for pseudolite system. And he is leading the team uh, which has developed pseudolite-based navigation system for precise landing of aerial vehicles such as RLV. His research interests include development of navigation algorithms for standalone and differential positioning and applications for Navi, Coven, pseudolites, and Leo GNSS. He had more than 55 publications in peer-reviewed journals and conferences. Uh, uh, Dr. Shukla is the recipient of Team Excellence Award of ISRO and National Geometrics Award Technology. So with that uh, introduction, uh, you can very well understand. So uh, now the uh, participants has got the opportunity to hear directly from a person who, uh, who has real life experience in working with the system. And we are very fortunate to have him or to uh, rather get him as one of the experts. So once again, thank you very much. So with that introduction, uh, I would request Dr. Shukla to start his presentation. So plan is like that. So it is 19 or 10 approximately. So you can stop at 1950. You can take 10 minutes break. And once again, we will start, uh, start at 20.00. That means right. from 8 to 8.50, once again, the second session. And after that, once again, a 10 minutes break. And after that, from around 9 to 9.30 or like that, whatsoever you like, uh, you may interact and answer uh, the questions. Once again, as we are uh, telling every day, that you please type in your questions so that afterwards Dr. Shukla can pick, pick up those questions and answer, or you can directly open up your mic and uh, 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 start the question. So Dr. Shukla, the uh, um, uh, screen is yours. I cannot say uh, for Thank you, Dr. Bose. Uh, okay. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, um, um, I'm very happy to join you here. And uh, uh, good evening to all the participants. So. Uh, uh, I've been given the uh, topic of GNSS and Navic applications uh, for this uh, uh, workshop. And uh, we, uh, I will start uh, with uh, a very brief overview, though you might be aware of the systems. Uh, can you put it on presentation mode? OK. so. Uh... So actually, it is the PDF. So uh, I've, I've, I've used full screen. OK, OK, fine. OK, okay. just a moment, please. So should I start? Yes, sir, you can start. OK, I hope I'm audible to all. And uh, yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, so uh, very good evening. And uh, uh, today uh, I will be talking about GNSS and Navic applications. So uh, assuming I know you might be aware of the navigation systems, but uh, just to uh, tell uh, the system uh, the way uh, I want to. So I, I have kept a couple of slides on GPS and then Navic. And then uh, I will be covering about uh, the observables. Then we will come to some uh, positioning techniques, because right now a lot of work is being done on uh, being done 
uh, on these positioning techniques such as differential positioning and precise point positioning then uh, i picked some specific applications uh, some which can be done using gps and some uh, which can be done by only navic because navic has uh, s band signal which D gps is not having so some of the aspect i will cover and maybe i could not uh, accommodate all the applications because this field is so vast so uh, some of the applications uh, are there which i could not cover so maybe if somebody want to discuss we can discuss about them as well so let us start uh, please go to next slide yeah so uh, as uh, we know uh, satellite navigation systems uh, have major three components uh, first is space segment which consists of satellites <coughs> and uh, these constellations uh, 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 having uh, some number of satellites depending on they are global in nature or in regional in nature so uh, global systems as you know are global positioning system gps of us it was the first uh, global positioning system then russian system glonass came up it is also a global system uh, and then uh, uh, european union system galileo is uh, uh, available now as a global system and chinese bido uh, is so there are four global navigation systems currently and uh, since india was developing first time this kind of system and uh, they had to uh, go for a cost effective solution so uh, they have chosen to uh, first to develop a regional navigation system in fact china also take the similar path earlier uh, before uh, uh, developing bido uh, as a global system they developed it as a regional system so a uh, similar approach was taken by uh, in in uh, indian scientists as well so uh, so as you know uh, there are uh, two uh, favorite orbits uh, rather one favorite orbit is there and uh, it is uh, covering most of the global system so that is medium earth orbit so medium earth orbit is uh, somewhere from 18000 to 26000 kilometer roughly from the earth surface and uh, all the global systems are in that orbit but global systems are very costly and uh, a lot of maintenance and replacement of satellite is required from time to time so uh, india went uh, for regional system because it was uh, cost effective and it was fulfilling our needs uh, for navigation uh, in indian and uh, peripheral areas so india uh, has chosen for uh, system uh, on uh, geo and gso orbits so why because uh, uh, in geo orbit you know it is uh, this orbit is orbit is such that the uh, it is around at 35876 kilometer from the earth surface and if uh, we launch any satellite in that orbit it will remain Appear, uh, appear to uh, look like it is as if it is stationary to a user on the earth surface so these are two favorite uh, uh, orbits right now japan is also having qzss system quasi in a satellite system which is also having similar not similar but uh, similar kind of orbits uh, then control uh, segment is there uh, this is the biggest segment and this is the heart of any navigation system though we see satellites in the uh, uh, space uh, are there and uh, we are more fascinated with them but control segment is the real uh, uh, workhorse of any navigation system so it is responsible any navigation system must have its own uh, system time so the timing center uh, uh, is one one uh, part is timing center then uh, there is master control station uh, or center where uh, all the uh, uh, data from the uh, th there are uh, receivers spread all over the uh, service area dual frequency receivers they receive satellite signals 
if it is gps say l1 l2 signal they will receive and in real time this whole data will go to master control station and there they will process uh, uh, for uh, orbit and clock errors and ionospheric errors also and they will uplink this data to the satellites and satellite will uh, take that data and then again uh, downlink to the users with the uh, 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 rf carrier along with that it will be modulated uh, data will be modulated so uh, using that data receiver can uh, do the ranging and uh, you know if uh, uh, you know the location of the transmitting source that is satellite and distance between satellite and unknown person who is have uh, uh, unknown uh, uh, point uh, uh, or person who is equipped with the gnss receiver so uh, it will uh, if you know the distance and satellite coordinates then you can do trilateration to uh, uh, find out the position where uh, you are so th that is the process and that uh, that part is being done in the user <laughs> segment <clears throat> so user segment is having receivers user may be anywhere uh, on the earth surface in a car in uh, uh, in a marine in environment or in air so uh, as you know uh, missiles and many other things are equipped with gnss uh, chips and uh, uh, with with the help of inertial navigation system and gnss system they uh, can strike uh, pinpointly at any place and desired place so uh, receivers uh, are a very important part as well because they receive all the signals which some of which is uh, made or uh, processed as, uh, uh, in control segment on the ground and are again uplinked so these are three major components space segment control segment and user segment so control segment sometimes is also called ground segment next one so this is a one picture uh, in pdf you will not see that uh, this is changing but uh, in powerpoint presentation uh, it it changes uh, the scenario uh, every uh, is kind of uh, movie kind of thing so in the center you can see there is a earth and uh, it is typically gps constellation so there are six orbital planes uh, uh, 55 degree apart of uh, uh, and uh, every uh, orbit is having minimum four number of satellites so minimum 24 satellites are required uh, for any global system to provide services uh, uh, on the uh, on or near the earth surface so here you can see seven satellites are visible at a time so minimum four satellites are required to compute latitude longitude altitude and fourth is required to compute the time bias that is the time difference between receiver clock and system time so uh, that that way the whole system works so if we had more, less than four satellites maybe still you can do 2d positioning or you cannot do timing thing so uh, there is a trade off or choice next one so th uh, this is one uh, diagram uh, which uh, shows all the things in totality uh, for any navigation system so you can see in upper circle uh, there are uh, satellites so that is the part of a space segment then uh, in the left side circle you can see users they are on the road ship air or in aeroplane or anywhere uh, or any pedestrian is having receiver okay so and then on the left uh, rightmost part uh, lower part uh, you can see it's a control segment and this is the biggest uh, uh, segment though a satellite launch cost is also very high but this <coughs> control segment is also having a lot of uh, uh, like uh, uh, atomic clocks for timing then uplink station then dual frequency receivers for receiving the data and processing it and then generating orbit clock and ionospheric contents uh, so uh, uh, here you can see the signals are transmitted by the satellites and uh, they are received at the ground in control segment and uh, here they they do the processing and they are clubbed with the uh, uh, master control station with the optical fiber link or any other way 
So uh, then they process the data and uh, again uplink to the satellites and satellite again downlinks the data to the user. So that way uh, we are able to do navigation. Next one. <clears throat> so now uh, you might be wondering uh, if GPS is there, other global systems are there and we have chips or things in our mobile and uh, other gadgets or uh, things. So why India went for uh, developing Navic or IRNSS? Its uh, earlier name was Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System, IRNSS. But in 2016, uh, Prime Minister has changed its name as Navic, that is Navigation with Indian Constellation. So uh, you, you might be knowing Navic is a Sanskrit or Hindi word. And uh, uh, meaning, I think you are well aware of. OK, so uh, what was the necessity? Necessity was uh, during Kargil war, uh, India was requiring some uh, position coordinates uh, of uh, uh, so uh, defense people were requiring. Uh, so from where enemy was striking. So uh, but uh, due to some uh, international relation and other things, uh, 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 U.S. denied India to give uh, those uh, locations uh, with GPS. So access was not given. So India was, in fact, thinking uh, about developing such a system. Uh, however, this this episode uh, triggered the whole thing, and uh, then uh, it was decided that uh, this is must for our security of our nation. So that's how. Uh, Navik uh, was born and uh, you know uh, a lot of lives were gone in Kargil war from both the sides so uh, that was a tragic incident so uh, so to protect our country uh, this step was taken and now India is one of the leading countries uh, very few countries have uh, this uh, navigation systems of their own so now we are not dependent on uh, any other uh, country's uh, mercy or system. And uh, so uh, uh, now uh, uh, India is also thinking to go uh, for a global navigation system. So some uh, uh, initiatives are uh, being taken, although nothing concrete is uh, done, uh, but then uh, start uh, initiation or starting has uh, begun. So uh, next one. So uh, like uh, uh, I have described about GPS system. So this Navic system is also working. Uh, principle is same. Uh, again, uh, it is having three segments, a space segment there are, we are having geo and geo satellites. Geo means geostationary uh, uh, earth orbit and geo, GSO is geosynchronous orbit. So uh, these are the satellites and this is the unique thing about uh, Navic. Um, GPS and many other systems are not having this kind of uh, satellites in these orbits though their satellites are more capable and provide uh, able to provide global positioning uh, anywhere on the uh, globe however this is a regional system but it has its own uh, uniqueness so uh, then you can see here user segment is there in that users are aeroplane and buses and uh, other cars you can see and then ground segment or control segment in Navic we call it ground segment, but its function is more or less same uh, as the control segment of GPS. So here you can see dual frequency uh, receivers. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, then you have uh, master control station. Then there are CDMA ranging stations as well. Sometimes we do laser ranging also. Uh, so. As you know, it is a one-way ranging system or passive ranging system. So signals are transmitted only and receiver uh, never uh, 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 means transmit back to the satellites. So it's a one-way uh, uh, 
transmission only so we call this as passive ranging system so uh, this is a indigenous independent regional aviation system and in, under the control of indian government isro has developed it and uh, then dedicated to the nation so um, uh, some part of uh, most of the part isro is only taking care uh, wherever services and other things are required so uh, that government takes care of those uh, issues so uh, it provides accurate positioning velocity and timing any navigation system is able to provide not only position but velocity and time also to the users and uh, then uh, its accuracy is better than 20 meter uh, it is two sigma value so one sigma is somewhere uh, 10 meter or less than that and for dual frequency it is even better so uh, so because dual frequency receiver can uh, uh, eliminate atmospheric uh, uh, delays uh, so uh, its coverage is uh, 1500 kilometer uh, indian landmass and 1500 kilometer beyond its geopolitical boundary uh, some other um, more area it covers though it was intended to service indian region only so it's a all weather uh, system and uh, 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 is uh, one uh, better thing about uh, or advantage of navic or gps is that navic uses uses uh, grid based model whereas uh, gps system uses klobuchar model for ionospheric delay correction uh, klobuchar model is less accurate uh, i will be covering a little bit on that so next one so Navic or IRNSS architecture is, uh, uh, I've described it and uh, to complete it, there are two frequencies, L5 band, uh, L5 is uh, 1575, uh, sorry, 1176.45 megahertz and S band is 2492.028 megahertz. So these are the two frequencies and minimum two frequencies are required uh, because if you want to eliminate atmospheric delay, a single frequency is not enough. However, we can use a model with single frequency, any ionospheric model. Next one. So in Navic ground segment, as I told in that picture, uh, we have <coughs> ISRO navigation center, then spacecraft control facility, then range and integrity monitoring stations, then <coughs> timing, timing center, because every uh, system has its own timing uh, center so then cdma ranging laser ranging and data communication network next one so this i have covered you can skip that yeah this slide is uh, showing that uh, what is the uh, coverage so there is a primary service area and then extended service area so um, the uh, Primary service area uh, covers the area uh, uh, of 1500 kilometer contour from Indian geopolitical boundary <clears throat> and extended service area is uh, uh, there but then uh, you can see in uh, green circle and uh, uh, but it is less uh, position accuracy will be less there because <clears throat> grid based model will not be uh, uh, values uh, will not be available in that area because of the uh, reference stations are not there. Next one. So uh, this already covered here on the right side, you can see uh, some satellites and user is having mobile or something in that chip is there and uh, some signals are being shown. Three signals uh, it is receiving, but minimum four are required for let long alt and uh, timing uh, uh, information as well next one so there are uh, two services in the navic uh, one is standard positioning service and other is for defense purpose or other strategic purpose so uh, uh, in standard positioning service uh, as I've, uh, I've described the two sigma accuracy position accuracy is 20 meter However, we this is a uh, uh, targeted accuracy, but uh, in uh, actually we are getting better than that with the full seven constellation, uh, uh, full seven satellite constellation. Next one. 
so as i've described uh, these are the frequency values l5 band s band and bandwidth polarization is uh, right hand circular polarized so it is transmitted in rscp and received uh, uh, in rscp mostly but uh, as you know mobile phones are not having rscp antenna so they use linear antenna because of the crunch of space and power so some loss is there however uh, it works fine so then sub services as i told two services are there sps and rs next one then uh, frequency selection uh, uh, is based on many other factors some international regulations are there from itu so uh, why s band is there uh, it's not a, a choice it it's not by choice uh, since l band was saturated so l5 band was allotted uh, by itu but uh, india could not uh, get l1 band uh, that time so now system is on majorly l5 and s band but now new payloads are coming up uh, we have got l1 frequency as well from itu on a different modulation scheme and uh, now in new payloads which will be coming up in future uh, new launches so they will be having all three uh, frequencies l1 band l5 band and s band so this will make uh, navic system even more powerful so s band uh, as i have told uh, it it experiences less atmospheric delay because of uh, its higher frequency 2.4 gigahertz around and uh, it has some more uh, interesting applications we will uh, see today next one so uh, uh, in navigation data uh, uh, we have some timing information i know sorry correction we have two types of corrections grid based and closure however as i have told gps is having only grid based uh, sorry uh, closure model only so india indian system is having grid based uh, anosphoric model which is more accurate than uh, closure model but both the models are there as why they are required because as i have told in the uh, uh, secondary service area uh, there are no reference stations to support grid based models so th their closer model uh, will serve well and uh, with uh, some degraded accuracy so next one so now coming to the observables uh, as you might be knowing that uh, there are uh ranges are required to do positioning so there are two kind of ranges one is code phase range uh, or we call it as pseudo range and then career phase based range we call it career range so pseudo is the word uh, because uh, the when uh, signal is transmitted from the satellite and received at the receiver the only uh, receiver only uh, computes Uh, or estimates the time uh, uh, time uh, between transmitter uh, transmitted and received uh, uh, receiver uh, received signal so uh, if we if if we do the difference of received time and transmit time uh, and multiply it by velocity of light then we will get range but why pseudo range because uh, all the satellites in navigation system uh, you know that it cannot be done without the onboard atomic clocks so they are having atomic clocks uh, so whatever signal is being generated it is of very high stability uh, of 10 to power uh, minus 12 or that kind means if uh, it will run for 10 to power 12 seconds uh, it will uh, incur error of 1 second only so that kind of stability is there however the uh, system designers uh, view was to make receivers cheaper uh, because if they are bulky and having atomic clock then uh, we cannot carry them in our mobiles probably so to make the user uh, equipments cheaper uh, user is having uh, quartz crystal or tcxo temperature compensated crystal oscillators so uh, because of that thing there is a difference or mismatch in stability of the clocks of transmitter and receiver so that creates some timing error uh, between system time and receiver time 
so uh, that's why the ranges which are measured and some propagation delay is there uh, you know the because of ionosphere and troposphere so uh, largely because of uh, clock timing or clock differences uh, or clock stability differences uh, this range is not called true range it is a pseudo range so as you can see the in the equation pseudo range is true range which is never known plus c is the velocity of light and this equation uh, receiver clock bias minus satellite clock bias plus ino delay plus tropo delay plus other errors then carrier range is uh, uh, if we uh, 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 measure the phase and mu multiply it by the wavelength lambda then uh, the cycles can be converted into the meters and uh, this is the lower most equation here you can see two differences ionospheric delay is uh, in negative why because uh, uh, when there is a delay in uh, uh, ionosphere then to accommodate that delay uh, uh, in code phase measurement to accommodate that delay carrier phase is advanced from the same amount so so that uh, velocity of light uh, should remain constant so then uh, there is one additional term lambda n uh, which is integer ambiguity term which is not there in pseudo range measurements and then epsilon term is also here uh, based on uh, the code in this uh, multipath and uh, majorly and uh, multipath is uh, very uh, less 100 to 1000 times in career range measurements whereas in pseudo range measurements multipath is a big problem so next one so here one picture uh, is shown this uh, is a very uh, nice uh, picture showing measurement precision of code and carrier phase measurements so uh, in uh, upper part you can see there is a code phase so one chip is around uh, 297 or 300 meter roughly uh, and in uh, lower uh, part you can see there are carrier cycles so uh, receiver can measure with the resolution of 1% of a code chip or better bit better so it comes out to be around 3 meters so it uh, measures with the resolution of 1 to 3 meters somewhere whereas carrier uh, carrier uh, cycle is uh, roughly 20 centimeter or 19 centimeter for gps l1 frequency and uh, if receiver can measure with the resolution of 1%, so 1% of 20 centimeter comes out to be in sub millimeter level. So uh, uh, the uh, uh, conclusion here is that the because of uh, this ability of uh, uh, receivers to resolve code phase and career phase uh, with different uh, uh, capabilities, uh, code phase measurements are more uh, noisy and whereas career phase measurements are more precise so uh, if we want to do anything uh, as precision with the precise positioning or something where precise word is there so we uh, definitely use career range or career phase measurements whereas for normal navigation purpose code phase measurements are being used so uh, code phase measurements are noisy but they are very robust whereas career phase measurements are very smooth but they are very vulnerable if there is some loss of log then uh, phase lock loop uh, which uh, finally computes career phase uh, that is the first one to uh, get unlocked so uh, it is very vulnerable also so both are there with their own characteristics next one so this graph uh, very beautifully dip, uh, shows uh, this graph is on y-axis uh, this difference uh, consecutive time difference of pseudo ranges is plotted and uh, the middle part in the red uh, this this is shown in blue uh, pseudo range difference and uh, in the middle part shown in red is the delta range computed by career uh, phase so you can see uh, as i was talking about the precision so this is a real data uh, plot uh, of navic only so uh, you can see uh, the uh, 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 precision of uh, <coughs> pseudo range or delta pseudo range uh, um, 
of code phase is uh, uh, very high whereas uh, career phase precision is very smooth and it is going very nicely from the middle of the uh, this data so uh, that's how <clears throat> the effect of precision comes into the positioning uh, when we uh, use career phase measurement so using code phase we can give uh, say 5 to 10 meter positioning accuracy depending on the it is single or dual frequency receiver whereas with career phase measurements we are able to provide uh, uh, either decimeter or centimeter or even millimeter level positioning accuracy in post processing mode so next one uh, this is one uh, a typical error budget of any gnss uh, uh, system so satellite clock errors are uh, in the range of plus minus two meter these are residual errors residual error means uh, these errors will be uh, will not be uh, cannot be corrected uh, uh, even if uh, we uh, try to correct them with the best of our knowledge or model so uh, these errors will be left this is the worst case uh, uh, these are the worst case numbers shown here so clock errors are within plus minus 2 meter range then orbit error or ephemeris error are plus minus 2.5 meter i know delay for single frequency receiver may be there up to 5 meter it is one of the biggest source of error uh, in any gnss receiver uh, for positioning then tropo delay is uh, around half meter receiver noise depends uh, it is somewhere 20 to 30 centimeter then multipath though it depends on elevation angle and other factors but typical value is plus minus one meter so next one <clears throat> so coming to the position positioning techniques for error mitigation so there are uh, as i have discussed earlier uh, there are two main measurements code phase and career phase so uh, uh, we do uh, differential positioning or standalone positioning uh, using code and career phase both so as i told the code phase measurements can provide up to meter level accuracy uh, i am talking about 3d accuracy so uh, whereas career phase measurements uh, uh, are very useful however uh, there is a uh, price tag to that big, um, since it has integer ambiguity and other things so it has to be dealt uh, very carefully but uh, it, it is used in many applications we will discuss further uh, post, uh, in survey or uh, in real time connect kinematic mode right now there are a lot of new applications are coming up like uh, uh, testing driverless cars so they can be uh, uh, done testing can be done only using career phase uh, rtk kind of real time kinematic receiver which are able to provide uh, one centimeter or uh, accuracy or in that range then uh, precise point positioning is the one uh, thing where we can use a single receiver but still we can get decimeter level accuracy or 10 centimeter or uh, more depending on the uh, application but it requires uh, certain other things we will see next one so this is a typical scenario it's a very good slide to understand how uh, uh, how much positioning accuracy can be uh, obtained using a uh, any gnss system so you can see uh, there are two categorizations the x axis or horizontal axis gives shows position error whereas vertical axis uh, shows it is differential mode or autonomous mode and then uh, in the upper part you can see the uh, red one is career phase measurement and blue is code phase measurement so you can see uh, when we are in code phase measurement domain and autonomous mode uh, our position accuracy is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, high uh, means uh, inaccuracy is quite high or accuracy is uh, low in comparison to career phase measurements where accuracy uh, can be achieved uh, uh, either below one meter or in 10 or one centimeter level or even in millimeter level in post processing mode so uh, and uh, if you see differential mode uh, 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 categorization you see so differential mode uh, is uh, even more accurate and uh, uh, in comparison to autonomous mode so in autonomous mode 
precise point positioning is the only technique which can give better positioning accuracy uh, or sub meter level position accuracy whereas in differential mode you can always get centimeter level position accuracy however uh, things depend on baseline length or distance between the two receivers we'll see further next one so uh, i will uh, just touch upon what is differential positioning since this word has come up uh, repeatedly so here uh, we require at least two receivers uh, and uh, the uh, assumption is both the receiver uh, are separated by a baseline that is the distance between the two receiver and one receiver in that will be called a base station or base receiver or reference receiver uh, because uh, that should know its own location by survey or any other method and it has to be uh, inserted uh, uh, through some uh, uh, utility to the uh, in the receiver so and rover is uh, it doesn't know its location uh, its location is unknown so using known base station receiver position and uh, both the receiver should see the same set of satellite with that condition we difference the data of the two receivers so after dif one difference the common ionospheric error tropospheric error and satellite clock bias are cancelled out and if we take uh, the difference of difference that is double difference then relative receiver clock bias which is left after first difference is also gone so that way uh, we are able to reduce all the common errors as uh, which i have shown you in error budget slide so uh, then uh, we have very clean differenced measurements and if they are pushed for the positioning uh, they will uh, they are able to provide centimeter or even millimeter level accuracy so uh, this is our scenario right side uh, full navic constellation with all the seven satellites so two receivers are kept at some baseline but this method works very good up to 40 kilometers only why because after that uh, small residuals in ephemeris uh, orbit error and ionospheric error uh, or in even in tropospheric uh, uh, error uh, starts building up they don't cancel out uh, entirely so uh, that is one limitation of this differential concept uh, so but it's it, it can give a very good positioning accuracy next one so this is the thing I have just described. In left part, you can see one satellite and two receivers are there. So this uh, this is for single differencing. Uh, data is collected at the two receivers, and then differencing is done. And uh, in right side, you can see uh, after first difference, we need to take uh, double difference. So in that, two receivers are still there, but minimum two satellites are required. So uh, uh, the between uh, uh, first one is called between uh, receiver difference and second one is called uh, between satellite difference so then all the common errors are cancelled out in two differences only integer ambiguity is left so we know the methods to resolve that next one so there are uh, a lot of applications and there is no sphere of life which is untouched by uh, uh, GNSS uh, applications, whether you uh, are uh, using it for position or whether you are using it for velocity or you are using it for timing information. So a lot of civilian uh, are, and strategic users are using that. So in civil aviation survey, you can uh, read uh, them, uh, tourism, railways, strategic remote sensing, weather application, GNSS reflectometry, disaster management what not so uh, in mobile phones also chips are coming so there are uh, different class of applications being developed right now so everywhere uh, uh, you see a lot of applications are uh, being uh, developed and uh, a lot of uh, things are happening so people are not knowing but uh, knowingly or unknowingly they are using these systems in their gadgets or uh, anywhere like uh, power grids are there, they are time synchronized, they also use uh, GNSS time information which is of atomic standard. Next one. So uh, coming to again differential positioning, one is real-time kinematic position. 
so uh, 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 there is some uh, uh, radio link uh, from base station to rover and base uh, will uh, transmit its own data with some uh, information to the rover and rover uh, will be having that uh, uh, data and it will uh, be having a different software uh, than the auto, uh, standalone receiver and it will process the uh, do the single and double differencing and resolve the integer ambiguity and then it can provide the uh, centimeter level positioning accuracy in real time so that's the uh, uh, strength of any gnss system they have a wide class of position accuracy available as you have seen in previous slides uh, from millimeter to meter level or tens of meter level depending on the cost and complexity next one so dr bose is also you might some of you might be knowing uh, he is a pioneer in uh, doing uh, navigation uh, studies in india and uh, he has a lot of uh, 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 setups available with him with different class of receivers and he's trying to develop low cost uh, solutions uh, which can reach to common people so uh, it's great work being done uh, by he him and his team so this rtk system this i have described you can skip uh, so now coming to uh, quickly precise point positioning then uh, probably i will stop here and uh, uh, then uh, if you allow the we'll take break and then continue so precise point positioning is uh, a method uh, which uses uh, a single standalone receiver because uh, uh, you know for uh, 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 cost effective solution uh, we need to have only one receiver so if i am having two receivers say one receiver is of 5 lakhs rupees Uh, so you will have to spend uh, 10 lakh rupees and then some uh, 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 some money or cost for uh, radio link and there are a lot of complexities and logistics involved so if you have a single receiver single chip or something of that kind then uh, you can do the positioning with uh, much ease so uh, this precise point positioning is one such uh, solution which uh, strictly requires a dual frequency receiver with carrier phase measurements because we know carrier phase measurements are uh, can uh, give a better uh, 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 re, uh, precision and then uh, very good position accuracy so uh, but what is the main difference here uh, if i use a dual frequency receiver i can get rid of uh, with ionospheric error for troposphere i will estimate is as an additional unknown along with uh, xyz receiver clock bias i can put it as an additional unknown because a lot of measurements are available so um, that can be estimated uh, from the uh, po along with the position position solution and if i use carrier range measurement as i uh, told you it has uh, 100 to 1000 times less multipath so uh, multi path error is also gone which is otherwise very difficult to remove so what is left now ionosphere is gone troposphere is gone multi path is gone so now major error source is orbit and clock error so as i have shown you in the previous slide of error budget they constitute around uh, combinedly around most major part after ionosphere around 4 to, uh, 4 to 4.5 meter residual error so that is still left so what to do with that unless we reduce that there is uh, uh, the the strength of career phase or uh, uh, capability of career phase uh, we won't be able to use uh, because that much error is left so what we do uh, we uh, set up some reference uh, receivers uh, uh, especially to generate uh, ephemeris and clock products so these are uh, additionally uh, which are generated in any gnss system so we can generate additional ephemeris and clock products using those products uh, uh, and they have to be provided to the user with some auxiliary method like uh, people are using internet right now they can be provided uh, through internet 
uh, earlier uh, most popular method was to relay those corrections through some geostationary satellites such as Inmarsat or TerraStar or uh, all that. So a lot of those services are also uh, there. So this involves cost, but you have a single uh, receiver and using carrier phase and dual frequency receiver, you can achieve position accuracies of 10 centimeter or better. So uh, however, some uh, issues of convergence time is there. Next one. So this is a setup of uh, precise point positioning. So you can see uh, uh, some constellation is there and uh, users are there on the Earth surface and some uh, uh, extra reference stations are there which receive the signal from the satellite and uh, they generate ephemeris and clock product additionally. Product means very uh, precise products. So uh, means uh, timing information uh, of the order of nanosecond level and orbit information of the order of centimeter level. So if we use that product, we can do the uh, positioning using a standalone receiver with uh, uh, around 10 centimeter accuracy. So, uh, and these corrections are global, unlike RTK or differential positioning, which was based on the uh, distance between the two receivers, wherever they are kept, that is baseline length. It, it doesn't have that uh, uh, limitation. These corrections are global and you can get the uh, same accuracy uh, anywhere uh, uh, if you have uh, reference stations well placed and uh, FMAs and clock products are being generated. So why I am covering these things? These are the techniques which are being used uh, RTK and PPP in a lot of the applications like precision agriculture, some tractor is there and uh, uh, it is plowing the field and uh, it is getting some corrections from uh, base station and then it can put the seeds every 10 or 20 centimeter level and then uh, it can uh, optimize the cost of seed uh, because less seeds are required if we automatically put them into some holes uh, uh, every 10 or 20 centimeter level. So uh, precise point positioning can also do the same job so depending on the application like survey and land record, uh, we need centimeter level accuracy because if uh, you uh, measure the field of any boundary of field of any person with meter level accuracy, then there will be a lot of dissatisfaction. So centimeter, uh, then there are applications uh, of dam deformation, then uh, earthquake uh, studies. Uh, so uh, means uh, whenever there is a, land subsidence or uh, you can see land slides are there. There are also career phase measurements uh, or RTK kind of or differential kind of setup uh, uh, is able to capture the movement in the uh, uh, before landslide. The uh, landslide occurs when there is some trigger of earthquake or rain. Before that it starts sliding in uh, millimeter or uh, level and accumulates up then uh, career phase measurements can be used to uh, catch that movement and they can uh, uh, issue an alert or warning uh, to the people who are in the affected areas. So uh, that's how uh, these applications are uh, very uh, important and uh, a lot of, uh, like I've told about driverless car uh, development and testing, uh, there these kind of measurements are very important and necessary drones are having those kind of chips and capabilities so they observe the fields and other things and uh, geotag them with the uh, great precision so uh, these are all very important and novel applications being built up uh, worldwide next one so this is one uh, slide i have kept which uh, tells you the difference between normal standard positioning uh, system or service and precise positioning, uh, precise point positioning. So in uh, uh, normal kind of thing, uh, there are broadcast orbit and clock errors by any system. They are but accurate in uh, say uh, uh, 2 to 2.5 meter uh, level uh, accuracy. However, in PPP, precise orbit and clock products are there which are accurate up to 
uh, timing is accurate up to uh, nanosecond level and um, uh, orbit information is accurate up to uh, centimeter level like accuracy so that is the main difference then uh, normal positioning system uses pseudo ranges basically uh, to avoid complexity and uh, then uh, specific service users which use precise point positioning which require more accuracy they use uh, pseudo range and career range both but ma majorly uh, career range is a uh, mandatory uh, me measurement required for this and uh, this uh, sps can give you meter level accuracy or some 10 meter level uh, however uh, this uh, ppp can give you centimeter level accuracy with additional error model as i have told uh, troposphere you can estimate as an unknown in the equations so along with uh, xyz and receiver clock bias so uh, isro is also gearing up to uh, establish uh, continuously operating reference stations which are the part of ground segment of any uh, precise point positioning service they can generate precise ephemeris and clock products and give to the system or provide them through internet or using a geostationary satellite they can be relayed so uh, with these uh, kind of things uh, a user can get global uh, corrections or, uh, and do the positioning with 10, 10 centimeter level accuracy next one so uh, but everything comes with some price tag as i have mentioned so these are uh, very uh, reliable and uh, convenient uh, applications which are done using precise point positioning. And uh, as I've told, RTK is limited by baseline length. And other thing is that their radio modem or uh, communication link is required, required to transmit some information from base station to rover. Uh, so that uh, link should have line of sight and that is also one limitation in rtk however uh, ppp is not having any such limitation disadvantage is that in ppp convergence time is more typically around 45 minutes and in navic since it is a, a combination of geo and gso satellites so they are moving less faster than meo satellites so con if geometry is not changing rapidly then convergence time will be increased so that is a disadvantage of Navic as well, uh, whenever this convergence time through PPP is involved. But there are uh, various uh, techniques being developed worldwide using all the constellation together. So uh, they are able to reduce convergence time, uh, some, uh, uh, some hexagon or some company receiver, they are claiming that uh, uh, not claiming they have shown that uh, uh, they can achieve the convergence time in minutes if they process all the constellation together so there are some advantages some geometry changes occurring very fast okay so next one this is one slide which shows you the summary of position accuracy standalone versus differential gnss uh, again on the x-axis you can see the marks of 10 kilometer, 100 kilometer, 1000 kilometer and more. This is the baseline length. Uh, so, and Y axis, you can see the accuracy. Now uh, you can see the marks, one centimeter, 10 centimeter, one meter and 10 meter. So in 10 meter, you can see uh, G normal GNSS systems are there, which use standalone receivers. Then uh, uh, next to uh, below that are differential uh, GNSS and satellite based augmentation system like uh, gagan uh, us was or Ig ignos of european union and msas of japan so these these are uh, the systems which can provide you um, meter level kind of 3d positioning accuracy and 2d uh, accuracy below meter level uh, however if you see the rtk and ppp they are more uh, specialized position, positioning techniques based on career phase measurement with better resolution and precision. So uh, you can see they can provide position accuracy in centimeter, one centimeter to 10 centimeter level. Uh, as you can see, RTK depends on baseline length. So there is a slant, uh, uh, slant line or uh, strip you can see in blue. 
or uh, uh, in this uh, yeah uh, sky blue color so here you can see yeah cursor is there so here you can see uh, uh, it depends on baseline length say if you see on x axis it ranges from 10 kilometer to say 50 or 60 kilometer then accuracy is also as baseline length is increasing accuracy is changing or decreasing so uh, typically every 10 kilometer one centimeter accuracy is degraded in rtk uh, one centimeter then uh, if we go along a baseline further 10 kilometer and then further 10 kilometer so you lose accuracy uh, every 10 kilometer by one centimeter so we call it as one ppm so uh, th that's why if you see any data sheet of rtk receiver the accuracy is defined say some centimeter plus some ppm so uh, however if you see ppp it's a uh, consistent throughout it doesn't depend on baseline length uh, whether it is 10 kilometer or 10000 10, kilometer its accuracy is uh, the similar say 5 to 10 centimeter level okay so that is the beauty of gnss systems and different class of systems there are a lot of like uh, normal standalone then differential augmentation system rtk then ppp and some other things are being developed worldwide no, right now leo based uh, low earth orbit based gnss system uh, is in fashion we can say so a lot of research is going on so you people also can take up some research topics uh, there are starlink oneweb and many other uh, broadband satellite communication systems are there uh, so they they don't have ranging codes but you, uh, any gnss receiver can capture doppler measurements and using those doppler measurements you can still do positioning however accuracy is not as good as uh, gps gnss systems uh, normal gnss systems in mio and geo and gso however the future is uh, leo gnss uh, and uh, a lot of research is going on in that direction so uh, so should i stop here Dr. Bose? Actually, I was in the other screen, so I have to come out. Yes, yeah, now we can stop. It is 2010. So we will come okay. back at 2020 uh, and we'll continue. So okay. uh, there, okay. is, there will be a 10 minutes okay. break. Uh, and once again, we are stopping recording. And once again,